How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week eight. We've got to go on the road to go play at Troy. They're two and three. Herb Street thinks we're going to win. But before we get into that, a couple of things. We got to do our recruiting. We got to edit our sliders. Take a look at ESPN. And you, if you enjoy the content, need to subscribe. Maybe like the video if you enjoy it. Um, let's go ahead and do our sliders first. Um, we're going to change a few more things than, than we had initially said. We decided at the end of the last episode that we were going to up the AI's field goal power and accuracy. I don't think that we've seen a, uh, the CPU make a field goal yet. So we're going to continue to do that until it seems like it should be about right where they miss them every once in a while, but they also hit them. I, I'm looking maybe 60, 40 make to miss. We're going to put up their kickoff power one tick. Uh, I don't think that they're giving us enough touchbacks. I feel like we've had too many returnable kicks, so that'll change a few things. We're going to leave their interceptions how it is, but we're going to up their pass coverage, their wide receiver catching, and I think we might up their QB accuracy. This was one that we're not going to change for this. We've made a bunch of changes. We'll see how it is, but I'm going to be looking at how the quarterbacks that we play are throwing Obviously, we haven't played the, necessarily the best quarterbacks, so a few misses here and there makes sense, but I want to make sure that they are uh, not egregiously uh, missing their targets. In the recruiting game, we have three guys committed, uh, running back, a tackle, and a center. We can look pretty solid. Ryan Ford, 67 overall is going to be good for us, I think. Uh, Andrew White, 64 overall at tackle, but I'm not necessarily expecting... Uh, so the guys that we're getting this year to start right away and Donald Dunn also 64 overall but again if we look through some of the guys that we have mid to low 60s um you know maybe maybe not always the greatest Calvin McCoy 50 overall he actually might come off the board I kind of forgot that he was on here um we have offered him a scholarship so who knows we we might uh we, we might have made a mistake with that but as we look around, there's going to be some things that we need to realize. Greg Sims is, in fact, not going to be a target for us or an available target or achievable. Gosh, that's the word. So we'll take him off the board and we'll look around. Jarvis Williams only losing 30 a week. We are down 1600, though, so we're going to give him that full 500 to uh, try to max out our availability. And now that we're in week seven, we get 5,500 points as opposed to 5,000 to use for our recruiting. So that's essentially a uh, another player that we can just max out if we need to. Uh, I just like to go around making sure that we're looking solid in all of these guys that we're still gaining. And it looks pretty good. Joel Hall will need a few more points. We'll give him uh, 200 Everywhere else, it seems pretty good. If we're in the lead, we want to see the people in second and below losing points. And if we're not in the lead, we want to see us gaining points. And it looks pretty good here, except David Wilson, NC State gaining 440 last week. I'm not sure what that means for us. It's going to be a battle to hold on to him. They have their visit coming up soon. So David Wilson uh, will give him the full 500. What is he? 68 overall defensive end. Definitely a guy that we want. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit of a battle. We do have two guys to scout, so that's going to use up the rest of our points for this week. Jarvis Williams, uh, middle linebacker, is a bust. Oh, yeah, I hate to see that. He's still 62 overall, so I'm going to say still good enough for us. And Adam Johnson, it goes down to 61. Defensive tackle, man, not, <laughs> not great finds there. Um, but I'm not, again, we're not going to be too picky as long as we're picking guys up. And four guys, or more guys, ready to visit. We'll go ahead and set these ones up. And again, trying to stack up now the Texas State game. We're getting pretty late into the season. Only a few options left. Um, thankfully, they seem to be pretty much always available. And except for Tim Poland, the tackle, uh, we could either go early in the season or very late. We're going to go very late against Arkansas State. With our first three recruits signed, they, they are two stars. It puts us to the uh, 105th class. And let's just go ahead and scroll up to the top here and see what the top 10 classes look like. Texas uh, looking pretty solid so far. Oklahoma and USC with a couple of five stars each. You got Miami, Michigan, Rutgers in the sixth spot, kind of interestingly. 
uh, Tamu, Minnesota, Alabama, and then Mississippi State. Definitely an interesting looking top 10. I'm sure that's going to change pretty dramatically here as a lot of stuff signs. And how about the fact that Texas and Oklahoma already have 12 players signed each? That's that's impressive. Our top 25 didn't see a ridiculous amount of chaos, although a few top 10 teams did lose. Number four, Texas drops to number eight after losing to Oklahoma in overtime. And number seven, Georgia drops down to number 16 after a interesting one touchdown loss at Mizzou. And in the Heisman watch, Travis Etienne stays at the top. Sam Howell jumps up to second. Kellen Mond, I feel like he's come out of nowhere, is up into third. Sam Ellinger drops. And Adrian Martinez, interestingly enough, jumps up to be that fifth spot here on the Heisman watch list. With all of that done, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our matchup one more time before we go into it. Um, pretty even with Troy, although I think they will be overall a little bit higher than us. And they've been putting up mediocre stats, two and three, but two and one in conference. So I imagine they played some pretty tough teams out of conference to take their losses. Yeah, a close 10 point loss to a, eh, a three and three Duke. They beat Arkansas State, lose by a touchdown to Mississippi State, lose to South Alabama. They got blown out 31 three and then beat Georgia State um, by a point. So their wins aren't the most impressive that we've ever seen and their losses, uh, you know, aren't great losses, I would say. I mean, two of them are to Power 5 schools where they kept it close, but they're not great Power 5 schools. And then their loss in conference was just got to be demoralizing. We're going to go with the black and white jerseys as we head on the road. And Troy is going to be in the red and white as they look to defend their home turf. Here we can see that overall difference. Both of us, you know, dead even at 77 overall, 75 on offense, and they have that slight edge on defense. Um, I just, you know, once again, it's going to be up to our defense, I think, in determining who's able to win this game. If we're able to stop them from scoring, which for the most part we've been able to do this season, I feel confident. Um, and I just, you know, the question, I, I guess it's just defense in general because we haven't been the best at scoring ourselves. In the ultimate John Madden take, I guess what I'm trying to say is whoever scores the most points is going to win the game. Hey guys, I don't know how to say this. We had our first technical difficulties during this recording. Um, somehow, even though I could hear it just fine and it looked like it was just fine, the in-game audio for this episode just didn't manage to record. So I've just gone ahead and put some crowd noise in over the game. Um, I fairly certain I know what the cause of the issue was, so we shouldn't see it again. So, I, I'm sorry. Uh, it's disappointing. Again, by the numbers, this one seems like we're relatively evenly matched. They have the edge numbers-wise. It looks on offense, we have that edge on defense. They actually have a pretty poorly ranked defense. They've got a guy visiting. We're going to try to ruin that. Uh, top players... Uh, Marshall up there 93rd or 93 overall and then the you know they drop down into that mid 80s so you know maybe a slight edge but here we go Grayson McCall again for us will be playing he's, he's still technically probable but he's fully back in meanwhile they have a corner out uh, probable with this strained shoulder so we'll probably see him <laughs> a right end out with a dislocated elbow and a running back out with an MCL sprain so I think, uh, once again, these things, they start to add up. They start to lean in our favor. The question is, can we take advantage of them? As we come into this one, we're going to go with Tails. You already know it. Tails never fails. We're going to kick this ball off, and uh, we'll see this one get underway. On a rainy day here on the road at Troy, this game's underway. This is a returnable kick for them. Oh, they've got a decent amount of space. The blocking is good. And they get across. That is the 30-yard line to start this game. Good field position to start the game for Troy. We'll see what they are going to come at us with. Tight end in motion. They go to the air. First play from scrimmage. Oh, I thought maybe Bush would jump that, but instead we just miss, and Kalen Geiger picks up 10 yards. They quickly go into the hurry-up. This is going to be a sack on the quarterback. I don't know what Gunner was trying to do there, but we're lucky to get to him, force a third down. 
I'm not sure what to expect on this third down from this offense. However, we are going to come with the big blitz, expecting a run. It's a handoff up the middle, and they're, we're, we're there to stop it. Fourth and three. Defense is going to hold first time out. And that worked much better than I expected it to. And if this is how this game is going to go, I feel relatively confident. Let's see how special teams does here as Diggs is going to feel the punt. Uh, that's not great. And also, we'll see how the offense gets on in this one. As always... Trying to get the running game going started in this game. Marable has some space to work with. Oh, if he just had a little bit more speed, he was gone. Still picks up eight, eight yards, though. Play action on second down. They're bringing some pressure up the middle. I don't think I see it, but Grayson's got a lot of space to scramble and will slide down across the 45. This one not going the way that Troy would hope so far. Another handoff to Marable. Good three yards on that first down. We'll go to the edge on this second down. And that didn't work out. Just couldn't quite avoid the tackle. The third and long here. We'll see what we can do in the air. Over the middle, Brown. We find him, and he's got the first down. A little double move there. Gets us uh, to move the chains and keep this drive alive. Just outside the 30-yard line is where this first down will start. That's good blocking as Marable picks up seven yards on that play. That uh, worked pretty well. They're bringing pressure on this one. We are going to run it anyways. It is a play action. I got to dip out of it quick. I hit the wrong button, but Denmark, oh, still almost came down with it. Anybody who has played on both an Xbox and a PlayStation knows that mistake all too well. Uh, I saw X wide open over the middle, and they're in different places on each controller. I hit the wrong X, <laughs> and uh, so it's an incompletion, but Marable is able to get it there on the third down carry. We'll get a little bit interesting here as we go for the toss to Marable. McFarlane in motion. It looks like this could be okay. Marable, can he stretch it out? Gets the stiff arm. She's inside the 10 for the first and goal. See what we can do. I might just throw this one up. A fade for Latushko. He's off his man. And he comes down with it in the end zone. A great throw and an even better catch for Greg Latushko. And just like that, we are on the board, 7-0. That's a uh, highlight real worthy play right there. I uh, just waited for him to get jammed at the line and then run past his man. And uh, he just did the job of getting up there and, you know, holding on to the ball is, again, another good return out to the 30 for Troy. See if their offense can help him out a little bit, though. Four wide receivers showing for Troy on this first down. We're going to come out in the nickel on this drive. And uh, interesting throw. Oh my gosh, a terrible broken tackle. We give up nine yards. Back-to-back -back drives now with incredible uh, plays on first down. And this one will be a handoff out towards the edge. And again, we've stopped him uh, and forced a third down. These guys were unsuccessful their first time out on third down. They're going to go to the air this time. And I kind of... Oh my gosh, my user is so bad. A broken tackle. Oh, what am I doing? Another bro... This is... Somebody take the controller from me. I don't understand how I can go from being great with the controller in one play to just abysmal the next play as uh, we, we've allowed them to just get inside the red zone. That is completely inexcusable, the angle I took. As uh, another completed pass gives them a first down now. Let's see if we can right our wrongs and get maybe a turnover on this one as... No, broken tackles allow DK Billingsley to get into the end zone. Tie game. That's that's all on me. If we don't mess up that play, we get the ball back uh, as that was a third down. But here we are. Well, we get to send Diggs back for our first kick return of this game. And it's going to be one that I'm going to try to return. We'll see if we can get ourselves good field position. They've had good field position to start this game. And oh, uh, I just couldn't quite turn it upfield. That puts us in an interesting spot here with 37 seconds left in the first. Inside the 25, we'll hand this off. Marable gets a yard, but no more. We're looking for the home run ball. Second and nine. Somebody's got to be open. There it is. I don't know what McCall was doing. Uh, Fountain holds onto it. I don't. Did you guys see that or is that just me? Yeah, McCall just almost got eaten alive by the turf monster. He's able to get that one up for a good first down. We've got time for one more play here in the first quarter. It's going to be a handoff to Marable. Making a little adjustment, finding a gap. We pick up six yards and uh, at the end of one, tied up. Big plays for both sides, including this one. Disappointing. Just 
I don't know what I'm doing there. Should not have allowed it, but we just got to strike back. At this rate, it feels like it could turn into a shootout. Isaiah likely going in motion, an extra blocker. Cutting it north is Marable. And that's almost enough for the first down, but not quite. So third and inches coming up. I see no reason not to run up the middle on this play. So that's what we're going to do. Marable has to fight for it, but we get the first down. Just barely. We might be looking at Sam Denmark here on the go route out towards the edge. Denmark has a step on his man. Can the ball get there in stride? He holds onto it inside the 10, across the five and down at the two yard line. It's 49 yards for Sam Denmark and Grayson McCall after a, you know, mediocre first game back has come out in this second game back and is just throwing dots today. We'll see if Marable can punch it in from the two here. Blocking seems to be okay. He falls forward for a yard, gets us that much closer, but not a touchdown yet. Somebody call up Drewski. We're going fullback. You Jones can't get it though. Shamari Jones short hit at the line of scrimmage. Third and goal now. We went with the halfback dive and couldn't get it. We went with the fullback dive and couldn't get it. It's time to give it to the quarterback. Grayson McCall on the QB sneak. Third and goal. Diving over the line. Gets into the end zone. <laughs> Maybe got bounced around a little bit, but that's going to give us that touchdown lead again. 14-7 Chanticleers. Defense after struggling, even though it was mostly my fault on the last drive. We'll come back out, see if we can defend the run, and quarterback just throws that one away. Had his man open, but doesn't find him. This time, a screen. We're there to knock him out of bounds after a gain of a yard. That was pretty close to being a couple of broken tackles, but we forced him into the third down. I expect him to go to the air. They will. And a man wide open. Eford on the run. Nobody's going to catch him. And Troy just destroyed us on that one. All too easy for Troy. 14 all. This one is quickly turning into a shootout. We'll see. Maybe Diggs can strike back and allow the defense another chance to get out there and prove their worth. No. Breaks one tackle. Uh, manages to get back across the 20, but not a great return. If we can play the clock well on this drive, it could really be to our advantage. Under four minutes in the half, we get the ball after halftime, so we could really use that to open up the lead. Of course, on top of all of that, we do have to have a successful drive this time out. McCall, oh, the spin was not the direction I wanted. Still picks up the first down, but he took a hit. New set of downs. Pressure coming and throwing that one away. Wow, McCall is <laughs> surprised that he was able to get it away that well. But we're able to avoid the sack and stay alive on the drive. And on this one, we'll find Marable, who holds on to it and gives us a third and manageable. Third and five. We will go to the air. Likely picks it up and falls forward for 19 yards. Grayson McCall now six of eight for all, over 100 yards in the game. So we'll go play action on this first down. And over the middle, maybe we see him. Javon Hiley holds on to it through the contact. Our guys are catching the ball so well today. McCall even getting hit as he threw that one. So an absolute dot as we'll run for three there, trying to keep this defense honest. And we'll put it on the ground again here. Second and seven. I don't think that's going for a whole lot. Marable just got stuck on the lineman. That's third and eight now. Seeing what we can do through the air, throwing the timing route. Sam Denmark gets the first down inside the 15. Under a minute and a half to play in the half at this point. So it seems we're doing decent on the uh, clock management. The question is, can we finish the drive? Marable making a guy miss. Falling forward there after a big hit for seven yards. Second and three. We're throwing up a fade here. Denmark. Oh, he couldn't get the separation. Ball was well short anyways. Just need the first down on this one. Third and three. We go to the air over the middle. Wide open is Latushko. Nobody near him. Eight yards into the end zone. And with 42 seconds, we retake the lead again. Neither defense seems all that interested in uh, getting stops today. As Troy will come out with 42 seconds and all their timeouts and see what they can do. There's a sack right off the bat. I got to think maybe that tempers their expectations on this drive. Clock ticks below 30. At this point, as I imagine they will decide to go to the air, burning a lot of clock. We might just be going into the locker rooms. There's a chance that they just don't snap this. 
interesting. You would think, knowing that we get the ball to start the third quarter, that they would want to go for this. Back our guys up and... Uh, Maybe see one more play out of them at the clock. Hitting triple zeros. Quarterback scrambling. Takes a shot. Uh, at the end of the day, was that really worth it? We go into the locker rooms now. Up seven and getting the ball. And I got to say, that's so phenomenal for us because neither defense has been great in this game. Gives us a great chance for uh, for a good, a good lead and potentially the win. Diggs back one more time to return fielding this one just outside the end zone a lot of running room straight in front of him the blocking holds up Diggs across the 40 tackled as he crosses the 45 yard line if you're Troy that is absolutely opposite of the start to this half that you wanted uh, Marable picking up a few yards on the ground this this could turn ugly in a hurry for the Trojans Going to the air here on second down. I'm throwing this up for Javon. Never mind. It is worth thrown. I think if we could have got a pass off, there's a, it was a good 50-50 ball. Instead, it's the third and seven as we are going to have to go to the air again. I'm looking for Latushko. That was a terrible throw. And we're lucky that one wasn't picked off. We get to these points where it feels like we're going to do really well. And then I just screw something up as... Are we still for the brand inside the 10? The ball comes to a rest at the 7. Another good punt for us. We're, we're starting to dial it in. We're going to dial up a little blitz here on first down inside the 10. They will go to the air. Quarterback scrambling and he's hit, but not before picking up five yards. Not a whole lot of runs going to the running back in this one. Quarterback scrambling again, hit in the backfield twice, stumbling around and he sacks himself. We just need to tackle better, man. I really enjoy that we're getting pressure on the quarterback here, but it's a little bit annoying. We can't do more as they are going to go to the air wide open out route. And that's a first down as they cross the 20. First down again. They're going to go to the air. Oh, that was a very risky throw. They're lucky that one doesn't end up in the hands of the defender. Now we've got a big second down to worry about as they're going to go with the option. Quarterback pitches it out and DK Billingsley just got leveled in the backfield. It's third and a long ways to go here. They've got two backs in the backfield. This is a halfback slip screen. They're getting decent blocking. Can we stop it? Finally, not the worst user from me. We forced the fourth down, and I think we'll see a punt. So maybe a chance for Diggs and the rest of the special teams unit to uh, keep our offense from seeing the field. This is definitely going to be a returnable one. The question is, how is the blocking going to be? Diggs, so far, it's pretty good for him. Across midfield, across the 40. And he's down right at about the 35-yard line. Our field position has been really solid for the most part in this game. Is This is a interesting one. I, <laughs> oh, I, I was looking downfield to see who was open and just didn't see the, the pressure coming at me there. So uh, interesting. Look, let's throw up a risky pass. Denmark, yeah, I, I, I'm getting reckless now. Third and 14. Seven of eight on third downs. I got to say, I'm not expecting to get this one, but uh, maybe we can at least get ourselves into comfortable field goal range. Tough throw. Denmark comes down with it, and he crosses into the red zone. That was a great throw. So just like that, the drive is still alive, and we're now threatening to score a touchdown as Marable picks up a good seven on that carry. Troy desperately needing to hold us to a stop, I think, at this point. Late in the third quarter. Uh, I'm just not sure where where two scores are going to come from for them, and that was maybe not the wisest throw out to the running back. We'll try to pick up this first down on the ground. Maribel, a lot of space looking for the end zone. Can't quite get to it. Picks up nine yards. It looks like he's down at the one or two. It didn't work last time when we went to Shamari, but we're going to go fullback dive from the one again and on the first and goal. The fullback dive works. It's a touchdown. Two score lead for us here as we get late in the third quarter. Biscardi puts this one out. It's a returnable ball for him. Geiger's going to bring it out of the end zone and not really get anywhere that time. We're going to get a little bit risky here. First down, bringing a big pressure. We got to the quarterback. We hit him and forced him to throw that one away. If he was able to stand in there and make the throw, he had a man wide open, but just couldn't quite do it. Defensive line brings down Billingsley in the backfield. Now it's third and long again. Really feels like we're in control of this one. They're going to go to the air again. And that one is just batted down at the line. 
I didn't actually see what happened. But it has forced them into a fourth down, and we're going to get the ball again with a chance really to ice this game. Uh, see maybe if we can get great field position with Diggs again. And yep, once across the, or once again across the 40. At this point in the game, what's going to help us secure the victory is ball security. Uh, we got to make sure that we don't throw a pick or have a, a stupid fumble. But we also just need to make sure that we are getting a first down when it's uh, necessary. And this isn't looking so hot. Third and nine, Marable can't run for very much on those past two. See what we can do over the middle. I see Isaiah Likely. He's got it. Holds on to the catch inside the red zone once again. Troy just doesn't seem to have the answers to stop us right now. And with 20 seconds left in the third, I'm just not sure where uh, where it's going to come from. We're going to go ahead and let this clock tick out to zero and get into the fourth quarter. And man, it's looking really, really good for us. Up two scores, a very good chance to make it three. We just have to finish out one quarter and we will uh, be headed home with another win. At the start of this game, I really did think that this was going to be a close one. Marable picks up only a yard there. But this one went from a shootout to potentially what you could consider a blowout in a hurry. Marable cutting it back. No first down. Uh, but we're just going to kick this field goal. There's obviously the chance that I miss this. I've been pretty suspect with my my uh, user today. But we get it through the uprights. 31-14. 5-16 left in the game. You got to think that they're going to go to the air a lot more than they have been recently. And oh, I thought I had the user pick. AJ Lewis got lucky and uh, almost picks up the first down. They're going to be in a hurry up for the rest of this game, I imagine. It's going to take a lot of work for them to get back into this one. Quarterback scrambling. I don't know why he's just not running upfield, but he breaks a couple tackles and then again stumbles down. He could have a lot more yards in this game if he uh, could just keep up on his feet his balance seems to be a little bit out of whack first and 10 though near midfield they go to the air once again and over the middle uh you know five yards but the clock it's going to keep ticking for us second down this is a slip screen isn't it we're there can i just remove this from the game it's too easy to defend and as a result of the play we've got them in a third and eight not expecting too much difficulty although Oh, they had a guy wide open, but the receivers ran into each other. Gives them a fourth and eight that they have to go for. And, you know, that that could have been a touchdown. Wide open man, though. Broken tackle. Sweet catch up to him. Get Khalil McLean there. But not before he's pretty much able to get his team to the 30-yard line. So they're definitely moving. And there's a sack that's definitely going to help us third sack of the game for our defense we're gonna try a little bit of man here see if that helps us quarterback scrambling again this is gonna be the fourth sack third in 20 clock under three and a half minutes we'll see this quarterback really needs to work on his balance he kind of screwed up again they're wide open over the middle of the field this is the running back though and just like that and so they're inside the 15 i don't think that i can trust the uh the man coverage now as this one is going to be a wide open man in the back of the end zone so it's not over yet it's definitely not going to be easy but a 10 point game now with 250 to play they're going to go with the onside kick and if we get it i got to imagine this is over latushko on the hands team is able to secure the ball and it is time for us to get troy to start burning their timeouts and and hopefully for us to pick up a first down or two I feel like, uh, ooh, we didn't get a great job there. It's first time out taken, 207. And we're going to have to go to the air. So if we convert this, it looks very good for us. Right over the middle, we have Likely. Oh, they just didn't cover the tight end, and I think that's going to spell the end for Troy. One timeout left, down 10 points with two minutes to go. Typically doesn't end very well for teams as they take their final timeout here. We're going to bring Javon Hiley in motion for the uh, jet sweep. And that's going to be enough for the first down. That's all that she wrote. Game over. Finally. Barring an absolute disaster here uh, from Marable. I, I can't imagine that we end up losing this one. Although <laughs> they are doing a pretty decent job defending the run. 
Second and 13. Maribel, oh no, losing five more yards. It's a shame that they couldn't do this earlier in the game. It might be third and 17, uh, but we're just able to come out once again in this victory formation and take the knee fourth and 20, but the clock's going to run out and we are able to win another game. This is, uh, this is, seems unsustainable, but we managed to keep doing it and I can't complain. What does that put us to? Four and one, five and one on the season? It, we're, we seem unstoppable right now. We managed to hold Troy to two total rushing yards. Sure, we gave up 243 there. That's not a big deal. Two total rushing yards. So many sacks helping with that. Um, a very just consistent game for us. We do a decent job, 109 on the ground, 200 through the air, destroyed them in time of possession, got way more plays off, way more first downs. That game's all ours. Grayson McCall and CJ Brewer are our players of the game. 12 of 19 for 200 yards and three total touchdowns from McCall is pretty solid, especially some of those throws that he was making very early on in the game. CJ Brewer with the two sacks is very impressive for us. We level up. We've hit that level five, which is nice. And typically I would just straight up advance the week, but we need to actually, we can use that right now. We go in and just put that straight into the closer. We should be getting uh, more recruiting points. Uh, that's an extra 500 that is going to be very big for us. I'm going to view these 500 points as just a straight up bonus for this week. So what we're going to do is just give it to the guys that uh, don't already have 500 near the bottom of the board and help get them into uh, a position where we're in the lead with them even sooner. Now we can advance into our next bye week uh, before playing at Louisiana Lafayette, the Ragin' Cajuns. We're five and one. What are the odds that we finally start getting a little bit of respect in the polls? and uh, maybe start picking up some votes. Two new players ready to visit and still in recruiting battles with a bunch of guys. Bunch of XP as always, not ranked currently as we did have some chaos uh, last week. Number three, Auburn lost. Number 12, Michigan lost. Number 13, Notre Dame. Number 22, Miami. Number 19, Arizona State, and number 17, Minnesota, all losing as well. So it looks like UCF, Memphis, and Tennessee. So another game with a lot of ranked teams losing. We are not receiving votes, though. But we can just bump on over here to the championship contender to see what our actual rank is. They have us sitting at 50th. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. I think that we could beat a lot of these teams in front of us. And with Appalachian State, we actually might have a good opportunity to play that. Um, currently, they're sitting at 36th. That would be a good win for us. Four and one for the Mountaineers. Uh, but I just think that we maybe deserve to be a little bit higher than 50. Although I'm sure eventually we're going to play a team that's going to just slap us right back down to reality. But that's all going to have to wait for the future. We do have some recruiting that we can do in this bye week. But we're going to save that and everything in week 10 as well for next episode. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe. It's free to do it. If you don't like uh, the content in the future, you can always unsubscribe, but it really means a lot and it helps out um, for, for everybody that does watch to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it. That, that also helps out quite a bit, but that's gonna do it for this episode. Again, thank you guys for all the support that you've shown on the series. It's awesome. Um, just ridiculous the the amount of you guys that have showed up and tuned in for this series so i'm excited to see, to see where it goes feel free to comment if you think that maybe there's some more tweaks that we can make to uh to our sliders i mean part of it i'm not sure if i'm just you know except for the few mistakes that i make here and there if i'm playing well or if things are just set too easy so uh if you see something maybe maybe you're noticing oh he's always getting open when he does this or oh the defense always does this let us know we can we can try to make it a little bit more difficult because i want this to be a grind for these wins sometimes that being said 
sometimes you just deserve to to beat the team that you're beating by a lot you know not every not every game is going to be competitive in college football but regardless thank you so much for watching uh again i can't reiterate how much it means um and if you want to see some more content uh, nca fifa all sorts of other sports games feel free to head on over to our twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster and uh, give us a follow there but regardless thank you guys so much for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the teal boys wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning we'll see you later adios